What's up, y'all? What a horrible thing. It's not horrible. What's wrong with this age? What's up, Abdullah? What's up? What's up, Broseph? Oh. Good morning. Good morning. So apparently the fan Phantom Man doesn't like those age. I guess. I'm guessing that, that's what that comment means. Anyway, so I'm out here, uh, I'm getting ready to harvest a, uh, an Osage, also known as Maclara pomifera. That'd be the Latin. And uh, I just wanted to kind of talk about it for a second. Huge mess everywhere. Yeah, if you're trying, if you're trying to like keep a yard, it's not a good idea to have Osage orange. If you're doing other things than that, then it's extremely useful. So, first of all, the thing the thing that you want to look at if you're like going out to look for them, like right now, at least in like you know the center of the United States, we're in mid June, and so you're getting the um, basically like the the flowering period of the tree is starting, and so you'll start to see um, you'll start to see the the fruits develop, which is the, bas the basketball looking thing that I showed you. Or the, not a basketball, I guess really like a baseball. Depending on the age of the tree, they'll get bigger. Right there, they kind of look like little brains in terms of the, you know, and then the size, you know, you're looking at, that's my finger, you know. And then you're going to, obviously, like, if you didn't know this, if you're totally unfamiliar with these, if you're totally unfamiliar with these, these are, you know, they have thorns, right? Um, and it's only, I think only one of the sexes has thorns. And this should be, like, this should be the, this is the female tree, I believe, right? Somebody, somebody help me out. I'm sure there's somebody in here that knows a fucking shitload more than, about Osage Orange than me. But this should be the female, I believe. And they have thorns. And then the males don't have thorns. It's either that or it's the vice versa. But that's a fruit. That's, sorry about that. I don't know what's going on here. Yes, they call it, they call it, so Osage Orange, if you didn't know this, also has a lot of names because it's an extremely old tree. So like, it's called everything from like when the French were here in the United States during uh, pre, pre-colonies, you had, um, like they called it Bodark or Bow de Arc. You've got Hedge Apple, Hedge, Osage, Osage Orange. Um, you've got, I mean, fuck. It's got a lot of a lot of names. What you're looking for, in terms of uh, like the actual foliage, you're looking at leaves like they're kind of like a glossy, a glossy leaf, All right? Like that. Like that's your leaf. You got points on them. They kind of do a they do a uh, like a like a spread tip uh, formation that's kind of randomized, you know? So you get like a node. You get like a node, and then everything will shoot out of it. A node, and you get several shoots. So anyway, so what this stuff is good for is that you can do a lot of things with it. It's, it's extremely, it's just, it's like an extreme utility utility plant. Now, first I should say that the wood on this is about denser than pretty much any wood except for like perhaps like eucalyptus, which doesn't grow in like a normal climate. It only grows in tropical climates. Yeah, it's heavy as hell. So it's extremely dense. But that means it's energy efficient. And so this is this is like your this is your bark pattern. Right? This is your bark pattern that you're gonna find on like an old growth. This is an old growth Osage. So I plant I planted about I don't know, like three hundred of these like a year ago, and they're all extremely small. They take a while to grow, but they will get there. A faster one if you need something immediate is black locust. But Black locusts can get out of control, so if you're like if you like living in an HOA or something like that, I think you're going to be planting like 
black locust, like you, you might have something else coming. But in terms of Osage, you're looking at like, at like for fuel, let's say, right? For fuel for this tree, you're looking at, you're looking at like, well, how long are we talking? Abdul asked, how, how different would the bark look if it was young? So if it's young, it looks like, let me find a shoot here. Find a young shoot. It looks, they, they kind of, a lot of stuff looks really similar when it's young. Oh. It'll look like this if it's young. Hang on, there we go. Fuck, I'm getting like stabbed in the head by this. If it's young, it'll look like that. Can you see if my phone will focus on it? There we go. You see that? Looks like that when it's young. Once it gets older and spreads out, you start to get the splits and stuff. Or like, like that when it's young. So anyway, while this is young, like while it's, so once this thing gets dense, you can't do, you're not gonna be doing anything with it other than basically like harvesting it for firewood or fence posts. While it's young, like especially like green, like in its green phase, when, when you have new growth that's green, these are like bendable, right? So you can like bend them. And so what you can do when you're like first planting them in the first um, four years of growth, you can actually interweave them. So like you would take, you know, one and like bend it over, like if it's popping out of the ground, you would bend it over and then you can like, you can go like, if you had an interval of like, I don't know, two feet or something like that, or one and a half feet. And it's like one tree, one tree, one tree, one tree. You bend it over, you skip over the top of a tree and then tie it into the, the second tree in interval following. So it's like one, two, three, one gets tied to three, two gets tied to four, etc. cetera. You can use like twine or whatever. And they're actually going to, you know, they're going to graft together over time as they grow and grow into each other. And uh, it's going to make, uh, this, this is the predecessor to barbed wire. So before the invention of barbed wire in the, like the very infancy of industrialization, everybody in the world that was in the new world used Osage Orange as the fence. And it can stop, it can stop pigs. It can stop horses. It can stop cattle. So it's extremely useful because you just plant in the ground and all you have to do is like wait. I mean, it takes several years to get into place. But once you get it, you can basically like make something that is so powerful that it fucking stops. It stops fucking everything. You know, it's an extremely robust tree. And it doesn't have to grow like a tree. It can grow like a hedge, right? Like if you plant it in close center, like this is just out, this is just a wild hedge tree out in the woods. But if you plant it in an interval, you can make a tight, like a tight fucking fence that's like, you know, eight feet tall. Uh, they do have a really variable range of growth. I don't know how cold they get. I mean, I would guess they fucking survive cold ass winters. I'll tell you that. They require, they require a winter phase for the seeds to activate. And it's often strong enough for like, it takes like multiple winters of cold exposure for the seed to even wake up and start growing. Um, okay, so other stuff, so, so for like a, like a fence, it's really good. The, um, the wood is extremely dense. So you're gonna, get, you're gonna get about 32 million BTUs per cord. And your, and your cordage weight is gonna be like, I don't know what it is. It's like probably, it's probably close to, probably close to 5,000 pounds for a cord. It's like extremely dense. So it's extremely heavy wood. It burns really hot. So if you're if you're using like a really thin stove or something, you got to be careful, and you probably need to intermix this with regular hardwood, because it will actually it will actually fucking like you know melt your fucking stove if you're not careful. Like you get that shit red hot, you know, fucking burn a hole through your stove. That's how that's how that's how much energy is in the Osage the Osage orange, right? Um, other shit like it doesn't uh, it doesn't rot so like these are really excellent for fence posts if you pull it now a lot of them, most of them are really twisted 
but uh you know if you if you can get some uh some like if you're growing them yourself you can train them and make them as straight as you want and uh like they won't rot they'll last a fucking long time black black locust is also good for that they used to make ship masks out of black locust the um what else the fucking the fucking fruit the fucking brain fruit on these bitches so so a couple things to note there's actually there's actually like a luxury skincare product that's made out of uh the fucking uh maclura oil that women buy it's basically just extracted it's just oil it's it's maclura oil extracted from the seed um you know using like a like a uh like a uh, like a distillation type setup of uh, extracting oil, like an oil oil extraction, basic oil extraction setup, and they'll pull the oil out, and women will pay a lot of money for that and put it on their face. The uh, the actual the actual brain fruit. Where's one? I had one that was like close to me. What the fuck is that? Here's some nice big ones. The little fucking, little fucking Osage brain. See these thorns? These thorns are fucking, like this one's actually not, comparatively, like it's a fairly short thorn. Those motherfuckers aren't playing around. Those, those will straight up stick you, boy. And they fucking hurt. Because they are very, they're just as, dense. they're made out of wood, so they're just as dense as the wood. There's your fucking Osage orange brains, right? And they're fucking heavy. I'm try to pop one off. Here, I'm gonna have to put down the phone for a second. Pop this bad boy off. Oh. Yeah, and I just got shanked by those thorns in the arm, grabbing this bitch. There's your fucking, there's your fucking fruit. No, you cannot eat them. What you can do, you can actually, you can actually extract, you can extract um, like insect repellent. These. these are actually like somewhat repellent. Now they do have they do have like a milky uh, they do have like a milky uh, a milky. Sorry, I'm getting like bit up by mosquitoes. They do have a milky sap in them that is uh, can be pretty irritating to the skin. It's like very sticky. Um, but like people used to take these. Like you can take these hedge apples. And you can put them like under cabinets and shit like that. And it is, uh, they do have a, a repellent type of aspect for insects. Like insects do not like it. And you can, um, you can pull the juice out of the fruit and you can like spray it on stuff. And it will uh, repel a lot of insects. I'm pretty sure it even, it even repels like cockroaches and stuff. So it's pretty powerful stuff. And this is a very, the reason this looks so weird is because this is like a very old tree. This is like an extremely old tree in terms of uh, like tree selection and stuff. This has to be like, it has to be really old. And most of your old trees will all be like your, your prehistoric trees that are still alive and around today. All are really similar. They'll all have like simple leaf patterns like this, you know, where you just have like the veins protruding out in a focal pattern and they typically have like a round edge and a point. And those are like your old trees. So like pawpaws are kind of like that. Like pawpaw is a very old tree. And so is the uh, Osage. Um, so anyway. That, that, I'm about to cut these down. Okay, for sapling. Yeah, for, so for, for cloning and stuff, basically what you do, you can really do it any time. Um, but what you want to do is like, there are different types of uh, wood, right? So like on this tree, let's say, let's say that you're doing like Osage, right? So like on this tree, what, what I'm holding right here, you see how there are, you see how there's like the gray wood here and then you have the green wood here and this gray wood almost has a tint of green in it. Like it's still gray, but it almost has like a little tint of green. That's cause that's like how how much uh, capillary like fluid exchange is, is taking place. Like the green, the green down here, this is all fucking growing 
extensively, like really quickly, right? Like these just shoot out. These have just shot out this year. And that's why it's green because they're not like, you know, they haven't like uh, gone through a hardening phase. Whereas like if you go to like the bark, right? Like the bark, that's fucking locked in. That's like rock solid, right? That's not, that's already set, right? So what you want to do, the, the further towards green that you get, reasonably, the, the more <clears throat> capillary fluid exchange is occurring in the plant to be able to grow, to be able to shoot out a root structure. And the code, the code for how plants um, like replicate in that situation, like when they're um, just doing like new footholds in the ground is all written in there. And you just have to simulate the conditions that will unlock that potential to grow a fucking cutting. And so what you want to do is like, you wouldn't want to do a cutting, like you can't do a cutting off of a, off of like a leaf stem, right? Like that's not going to work. You've got to use, you've got to use something else that has that, that you know, is like the main part of the plant because you have to, you have to wait for, like you have to wait for the, you know, the, the, the system of the tree to get out that far, to have the code in it, to, to throw up a new uh, root system. And these don't have it yet. These are like, these are like the fucking, these are like the cutting edge feelers of the plant that they send them out and they're sacrificial, right? Like these are sacrificial. But this is like new body, new body growth right here. Now there's two ways that you can do it, right? Like you could, so if I wanted to, let's say I wanted to fucking propagate this Osage, which I've never done by the way. So I don't even know, like so I'm sure there's some plants, some trees where you can't do this. Like they have issues that like, you know, for some kind of selective reason, they don't, they won't work this way. But basically like what you do, if you took this, and this one's actually kind of a little short, I'd probably do a few more inches, but you wanna find the greenest growth possible and uh, early spring is a good time to do this, um, but you can really do it anytime. So what you do, fuck, I don't wanna drop this shit. So what I'm doing, you know, fucking, you strip off all of your bottom leaves and you typically want, you typically want like two thirds of the leaves stripped off. So probably even more than that. You typically want two thirds of the leaves stripped off. And then each one of these places where you just ripped off leaves has capillary exposure inside of it. And those would be places, those would be nodes where you would get new root growth. But to help that, you can just fucking shave, you can shave the side. You also don't want really like a split. Like I, just, I just ripped this off the trees so this is all split. You don't want that because it's too much surface area um, that's like deeply wounded into the core of this uh, shoot. And you can get... Uh, like fungal disease and shit can can access the core of this. You don't want that. Like flesh exposure is good for growing roots, but you don't want the flesh exposure to be to to access the the like what you would consider like the heart of the shoot, right? So you would like let me fucking show you an example. So like for instance, you could fucking take this and then you could you could take your bottom your bottom area. Come on, phone. Hello. You you could take your bottom area and you can just like shave it. So like there's an example right like I can see that you see that green that I just exposed I don't know my phone is like ridiculous it doesn't want to focus on anything okay there we go you see the green that's exposed there that's just from shaving so that's on the exterior of the plant and it doesn't go to the the core uh, like fluid conduit of the center of the of the uh like twig or branch or whatever and that's good because now you can now you do want it to be clean right like when you're when you're shaving this stuff you don't want to use something that's like fucking dirty and possible possibly has uh exposure to like fucking fungus and pathogens and shit you want to use somewhat of a clean blade and then you want that that rip on the end you want that to be like straight like that should look like more like
Fucking Osage is hard to cut. There we go. The, your fucking in chops should look like that. Right? Not like a fucking jagged wildebeest cut, but like a like a clean cut with minimum surface area exposure. And now you're gonna get roots out of the bottom and you're gonna get roots on all that green. And you basically wanna typically like what I do if I'm actually doing a serious cutting is uh I will uh throw the bitch in water for at least 24 hours. Like I'll throw it, I'll throw it in now you don't don't use tap water, use like distilled water. Pure water. I will uh, throw it in that and then uh, let it hydrate and then I'll throw it in soil and put it in shade. You don't want it in like direct sunlight uh, because you want the uh, root system to grow, right? And you don't want to leave a ton of foliage on the top because uh, you want to force the plant, you want to have a leaf at least so that it can absorb sunlight energy, but you want it to put all of its uh, energy into growing roots. The other thing that you can do which I don't have any aids, like visual aids to help explain this, but there's something called air layering where that's actually really effective. It's probably better than this method because it has more success. It does take a little longer, but basically what you can do is you can take like, like let's say you had a bunch of peat moss or even soil. Like you just use, you just use a loamy fluffy soil and then you can make a ball around this where you like compact soil on the area that you want a root to grow. And then you cover it up with, uh, with uh, like, like saran wrap, and then maybe like a layer of tin foil to block the sun, you know. And then uh, like you, you don't want sun to access it, and you want it to be like able to retain its moisture. So you make all that loamy soil all wet. You compact in a ball, you know, wherever you want a root system to grow. And then you wrap it up with plastic, and you wrap it up with uh, tin foil, and that will simulate without having a. Uh, open exposure for uh shit to get in there and fuck up your um root growing experience it will uh it will uh, create the conditions of it being like underground and uh propagating roots then you just come back and you fucking cut it right right at the bottom of the root where you put your that's called it's called the uh, air layering and then you fucking cut it off and now you got a little tree that just grew on a tree okay that's like uh That's kind of the uh, the second way. Yeah, for uh, 420 guys says that you can let the the coin burn off. I don't know if 24 hours will do it, but you can. Yeah, I mean, obviously you can you can fucking change change contaminants in water to make them. Suit. The the point is you don't want like you don't want you know, there's variability to how much chlorine is in tap water depending on the municipality and shit and how they do it. And so, like, you don't want a bunch of, like, hardcore shit going into your, you know, vulnerable cutting that you just made because they're not very strong. You want, like, pretty much pure water as close to it as you can get. So, anyway... That's what I'm gonna cut. I'm gonna start cutting this bitch down, and uh, I just wanted to do a video on uh, on the fucking uh, Osage because I think it's a really you know wonder, wondrous plant that is uh, not utilized. They did they did utilize it for a bit until like the invention of barbed wire, and then it just pretty much like got it forgotten about, and then uh, now like people are, are annoyed by it. But it's like probably like one of the best best trees, uh, most useful trees that's out there. And 30, 30, uh, 32 million BTU per cord is extremely significant for fuel. So like your, like oak, oak is going to be like, I don't know, like white oak is probably around like 24 million BTUs per cord, you know? So, uh, you know, you basically got like, I don't know, you've got, you, you basically got like an extra third of energy, like, you know, surplus energy in the same physical space, uh, for, Osage orange, if you don't like, if you're if you're familiar with burning white oak, Osage orange for the same amount of space will put out an additional third of uh, energy approximately. Um, black locust is like pretty much, I mean, black locust grows way faster, and you can coppice it. You can also coppice Osage; it's a little slower growing. But you can coppice uh, you can coppice uh, black locust. That that would mean like like if you let the tree grow up. 
and then you chopped it at like waist height so it's comfortable like you want to chop it at the height that you want to stand out so you're not bending over and then it'll fucking like send out shoots right and then you just come back on a like a four or five year rotation as a bunch of poles are growing out of it and you chop that and the advantage to coppicing is that you don't have to split it you know so you have like maximum surface area minimal um internal area to the piece of wood that you're cutting so you don't have to do like splitting so you just stack it up you know and it's just all it's gonna be like pencils basically and then you just get like fucking cords of that shit and then you've got like an extremely efficient uh fuel uh black locust is going to be around 27 million btu so it's higher it's higher than uh white pine or uh, white uh oak but uh not not nearly as high as uh, osage orange Um, it depends on what kind of fence you're talking. Are you talking about Abdul asks, how long would it take to make a fence out of this stuff? A decade? Which are you, are you talking about Osage orange or are you talking about black locust? And what kind of are you talking about living fence, like a living hedge, or are you talking about like harvested fence posts? Abdullah. I guess we have we have a delay in comments or something. Oh, Osage. Okay. Well, Logos, in my opinion, in my opinion, because Logos can get out of control, it shoots up uh, pups, and so like I think that Logos is best for like super fast growing fuel. Osage is best for um, like a living fence or like a hedge because you can control it. Um, it does take it does take work. Like if you planted a hedgerow and then just didn't tend to it for like six years, it's gonna fucking like start spreading. So you do have like, you know, I mean, you can take a couple of years off, but you got to like, you know, every few years you got to go in there and like fuck with it. Um, the fucking he like a hedge fence probably takes like, I don't know, five, like five years to get up to like waist height, like where it's intertwined and like woven together and uh, like good to go. And then it's going to grow into like the mature fence in like eight years, probably like where we're talking like, you know, a fucking like horse high fence that can keep horses in. That's probably like, you know, seven or eight years. But the initial fence, like a, like a fucking waist height, you know, fence that is gonna like uh, block, um, you know, like animals from like freely entering and exiting. Cause it also has thorns on it, right? That's gonna be like, probably like, uh, that's probably four years. I'll bet you could do it in four years. It really depends on your condition too, that you're planning. So if you don't, if you plant in an area that has com competitive growth, like, this kind of shit or like grass or something and you're doing like a hedgerow in this this stuff's going to steal a lot of energy from it if you just have like dirt and nothing else or uh like mulch or whatever and then you have fucking osage growing out of it it's going to get all of the available nutrients and it's going to grow a lot faster in its infancy and like the first two years it's going to get a lot bigger so it just kind of depends on how much work you want to do like i've got i've got a uh, i've got a hedgerow that is a uh, two-year osage and it's about um three feet right now and that's uh that's a uh, two summers of growth just to give you an idea okay so that is uh i gotta go i'm gonna cut this bitch down all right uh i'm gonna cut it down and i'm gonna let it dry until the fall and then i'm gonna pick it up in the fall and then uh, i'm probably gonna put it in a like underneath a uh like a solar wood dryer which is basically just a fancy word for making a long ass box with a bunch of windows on it. So the sun goes in there and gets really hot and uh, helps it cure faster. It'll significantly increase the curing time so that you can burn it faster. But that's what I'm gonna be working on. So I just thought I'd do a video on it just to kind of uh, give you guys an idea of that type of thing for the Osage Orange and how cool it is. And so you can go out and look, look around and see what kind of Osage. The, the great thing about it is that most people don't like hedge right now. So like you can pretty much like if you find hedge and uh, the people probably don't care about it. Most people, I would guess the majority of people that want it, that will want it to be cut down and they view it as like an annoyance. Um, but it's, the, it's like one of the, it's the most natural fuel efficient wood um, in, in the continental United States besides like Australian eucalyptus that grows on like, you know, California and shit, which you're not going to be able to grow in the, anywhere else. All right. 
Have a good day. Have fun. I love you.